Poe, and welcome to Canadian Franchise Opportunities, your guide to Canadian franchises. You can find us on the web at cafranchiseopportunities.com. Today's presentation is on selecting a franchise for sale and some of the top five things for you to consider. Let's get started. So you likely found this presentation because you were searching for a franchise for sale. Now what we do is we typically start every presentation with a key principle. And today's key principle is every franchise is not created equal. That's right. There are actually great franchises, good franchises, and quite honestly, other franchises you would not want to touch with a 10-foot pole. So the question is, how do you choose a franchise that is best for you? Well, I can tell you it's not easy, and you really have to do your homework. But here are five things for you to consider as you evaluate different franchises for sale. Number one is profit versus revenue. Now, this is probably basic accounting 101 for most, but I want to point out that a lot of people tend to get focused on the revenue, how much top line uh, revenue or how much money a franchise can make. At the end of the day, that's not important. At the end of the day, what counts is what you actually put in your pocket, the profit. So let's just look at a, a, a depiction here. We've got on the y-axis sales, we've got on the x-axis units, and that's just the number of dishes, widgets, whatever, whatever your particular franchise that you're looking at is selling. As the red triangle shows, it is highly likely that your costs will exceed your revenue in the early startup stage. So you're going to have a loss. That's what the red depicts. But eventually that total revenue line crosses the cost line and you end up with a profit. That's the part you want to focus on. You want to really get into the questions with the franchisor that helps you get a good understanding of not only what is that potential profit, but when is the break even, which is that little blue arrow in the middle of the flag. What's the break even point typically, which will give you an idea of how much money you need to keep that business going till it starts creating its own profit. Here are some questions for you to ask. Is there an advertising pool to which you must contribute? That's pretty common, but and that's typically a percentage. But that will t that will draw down from the the, the your the profit that you can make uh, at the end of the day. Number two, is the monthly royalty fee based on a percentage of sales or a flat fee? Now, a percentage of sales can help you in those early days because your sales are low. Then so is the fee. Although, depending on what the flat fee is, that may be something that might be more beneficial in the long run uh, if, in fact, you can achieve the revenue goals that, that uh, you're planning on. Now, what will be the breakdown of your operating costs? Get into the details of the costs. Don't, don't just gloss over that area. Really figure out what are the operating costs, and as you get into it, put them in categories. What are the fixed operating costs? I'm going to have that cost no matter what I do on a month-to-month -month basis, and what are the variable costs? So make sure you understand both sides of that. What is the average annual profit of franchisees, and here's the key, in a similar territory? You're going to have franchisees that may be super successful, but if their territory doesn't match the same demographic as yours, at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. You want to look at those franchisees that are in a similar territory. And then lastly, how much do both the revenue and the cost vary from franchise to franchise. Now that may be a tough question to get answered by the franchisor, but you could still ask it. The key here is that gives you a range of um, high and lows of what you might expect as a potential franchisee owner. Okay, number two, can you follow the rules? Are you the type of person that can play as part of a team? Because as a franchisee, you are part of a team and there are rules that you're going to have to follow. You're not the coach. The franchisor is the coach. Now here's some questions you might want to ask yourself. Number one, are you a good follower? If you're not a good follower, then you know what? Franchising may not be for you. Can you be a team player or would you prefer to call all the shots? And these are questions you really just have to dig deep down and, and, and answer them for yourself. And then, do you have the type of personality that wants constant change? Are you the kind of person that's going to constantly look for things to improve? Well, if, if that is, then again, think twice because a franchisor wants somebody that's simply going to follow the rules and not constantly ask for things to, to get better. Uh, and then lastly, and this really boils it down, is can you simply follow the rules and still be happy? If you can't clearly say yes to that, then just be careful uh, in looking at uh, the franchise business model.
Number three, family support. No matter if you're starting a franchise or any business for that matter, you need to make sure you have the support of the family. And because what this is going to have an impact not just on you, but on the family and the family finances. One of the questions you want to ask is, can you get by, or, or I should say you and the family, which is we, can we get by with little to no income for a period of time? And what are you going to, what are you going to do to, to substitute for that loss of income? Is it okay, okay if we push off buying that new car for a couple more years? Number three, can others handle the extra chores around their house? Because if, uh, you know, if you're busy uh, with the business, there is going to be um, some things that need to be done around the house that maybe you would have normally done. And will it be okay to not fund the retirement account for a few years? So the bottom line is many franchisees often underestimate the work involved in starting a franchise business. Even though the business may be clearly defined, it doesn't mean it's going to be easy. So get ready for some hard work and you may have to do uh, a lot of extra work in the early years until you really find that the business is paying off. So just get ready for that. Uh, number four, commitment. Make sure you have a passion for starting and operating a business. That, and you also have to make sure that you have a strong desire towards franchise ownership. Both combined will boost your commitment and a strong commitment to the business is needed if you're gonna get through the tough times. Now to test your passion and desire, here are some questions to ask yourself. Are you okay with owning the rights to operate the business and not actually own the business outright. What do I mean by that? Well, a franchise business model gives you the rights to operate that business for a spe specific period of time. You don't actually own that business. So you gotta make sure that you're okay with that. Number two, does the franchise business model, the one, the franchise that you're looking at, does it support your financial, retirement, and personal goals? And don't just say, oh yeah, check that box, it does. Get into the details. Define what those financial goals are. Define what your retirement looks like. What are those personal goals that this business has to help you achieve? Get really serious about it and uh, dig into the details. And that's the only way you're going to uh, do justice to your, to your homework and to this decision. And ask yourself, can you commit to five to ten years to the business? These are typical contract lengths. Uh, and that's why those two periods are mentioned. What happens at the end of the contract? This is a key question. And you know, it's a question a lot of people don't even answer or think about when buying a franchise. What is your exit strategy? Are you gonna be able to sell this business for a healthy profit? What have other franchises done? What has been their exit strategy? Really get into that because that dovetails back to the first question around, or the question previously around meeting your uh, financial retirement and personal goals. So make sure that's clearly defined. Lesson five, or I should say item number five, is really around the money. This is not going to be, you know, okay, I've started my franchise, I'm turning on the faucet, and money's just flowing out, out of the faucet. Not going to happen. In fact, one of the top reasons franchisees fail is because they lack the liquid capital needed to keep the business going until it actually starts producing a profit. That goes back to that early uh, diagram we showed at the beginning in profit versus revenue. So don't overestimate your success and underestimate the amount of capital needed. That's the typical mistake. Avoid that mistake. Here's some questions you can ask yourself. Do you have the liquid capital, the cash, needed to get the business off the ground? Can you fund that during that period of losses until that business starts producing the profit? And this is really going to depend on your estimate and this is going to depend on getting into the details of what the costs and revenue actually are for that particular business. Ask yourself, do you have a reserve set aside where if you had to, you could actually continue to pay the bills and get by for one to two years if that business isn't producing uh, the money you need? And does the franchise you're considering succeed in both good times and bad? In other words, hey, around the globe, we've seen some pretty difficult economic times. Is the franchise you're looking at, could it survive a difficult time? Is it a, quote, need to have type of uh, service or product? Or is it an item that people can do without? So if times get difficult, your sales might, might drop dramatically. Ask yourself those types of questions because you're parting with your hard earned money and you wanna make sure you're making a good, good decision. Okay, quick summary. 
Profit versus revenue. Bottom line is, will this business produce the profit that you need? Following the rules. Can you be a team player and follow those rules? Family support. Do you have 100% backing of the family? Commitment. And this is your personal commitment. Do you have the commitment needed for success, needed to get you through that rough patch? And then finally, money. Do you have the capital needed to keep the business going until it produces that profit uh, on its own and becomes self-sustaining? Those are the key questions. So I want to thank you for taking the time to listen to this presentation. Please be sure to visit us at cafranchiseopportunities.com and check out our free tools. We've got a Franchising 101 uh, white paper. It gives you some details about just the franchising business model in general. We've got a 22-page ebook called Franchise Fit. This is really going to force you to ask some of the hard questions to see if you're really a good fit for franchising. And then finally, we have a Franchise Evaluation SWOT Analysis. This stands for Strengths, Weaknesses, Opportunities, and Threats. And it gives you a really good framework that you can use to evaluate various franchises. If you found this video helpful, please like us and spread the word. Again, thank you for listening.